All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be an unboxing of not one, but two knives from Bone Distributing, AKA Knife Ship Free, AKA Northwoods. So these are two Northwoods knives from the most recent drop, which was of the Bear Lake. And uh, <clears throat> it's two different packages because if you have ever tried to buy a Northwoods knife on the drop, you know that they are, uh, they sell out super quick, even quicker a lot of times than, you know, a typical GEC knife. And those sell out very quick also. Uh, and I am not really like uh, a master of the drops. Uh, I've definitely missed some, I, I, you know, I would be lying if I said that I didn't often, you know, get a knife if I try to um, through the drops. But I do fail sometimes, and I often have trouble with checking out. Um, this time, I had actually just had a, an appointment um, and had to do it on my phone. I forgot that you have to do it a certain way to be able to use Apple Pay. So I had a couple that got sniped out of my carts and all that kind of thing, uh, some server errors and stuff. But um, it all worked out. I was able to order first a Frosted Mini Wheats, my Carta. Um, Hopefully the wind isn't too loud here. Uh, I wanted to do this outside. It's always kind of fun to do these outside, I think. Um, but then I also got a Kudu Bone. I've been wanting to try Kudu Bone. I have seen it in person um, at the rendezvous, but I don't think I've ever had any uh, knives in Kudu Bone. So I did get one of those also, but it was two separate orders. Um, and they shipped these so quick that they weren't able to put them into one. Plus I think they probably are pre, um, the prepaid postage for the weight of one, but who knows? Anyway, let's open these up. I don't know which is which, so um, I'm just gonna go for it, see which one I open first. Uh, I'm going to use, oh, I also have my Knife Ship Free shirt on. Uh, so thanks uh, to Jay and I think it was Josh uh, that gave this to me at the rendezvous one year. But I'm gonna use my Jack Wolf Knives Benny's clip to open this up, carrying this one um, today and have been, but let's go ahead and open this. Definitely cut into the packing slip, but thankfully not the sticker or the Ziploc bag that Northwood knives come in. And they also come inside the slip, but here's the sticker, set that aside. And this one is the Kudu bone. So I'm uh, gonna get right into it with the Kudu. You can see that it comes with a copper coin, kind of interesting. Uh, got, you know, those, those are an interesting thing. I like that it has the president, the presidential Northwoods on it because, uh, kind of is a little bit of a stinging reminder that I was, um, too dumb to buy one of those when they came out. I could have, and they, I don't even think that they sold out super quickly if I recall correctly. And I just like, didn't do it. And I think it was one of those ones that at the time I was like, I should probably buy this, but I just didn't do it. But anyway, Northwood slip these, this feels very high quality. Um, I don't know. I don't have my other Northwoods out with me right now, but, uh, it seems a little different than normal. It's a taco style rather than whatever the other style is hamburger style, um, <laughs> hot dog versus hamburger. And here it is. So right off the bat, I am glad that at least I am getting to see this in the sun because wow, it's really cool looking, really cool and really interesting looking. It's very orange um, and it's just so porous. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see that there. Really, really cool. You can see the sun coming through it. Um, really beautiful. And uh, I asked Jay because, um, you know, he said something online about the, the being mostly resinous. And I guess what it is is that there, it's kudu bone, but it's mostly actually resin that's put into the bone. Um, and I'll have to look into it more, but I believe this because it's so uh, porous. It's a very interesting looking material, that's for sure. Um, and there's even little like pieces of the polishing cloths or whatever in it still. So right off the bat, another thing that I asked Jay, actually before these came out, is if they had proud tips. I hate proud tips, you know that if you watch my channel. I also hate blade wrap, so it's a little bit of a tough balance. Um, 
And I was worried with these being a sleeve board and specifically what I would call a reverse sleeve board. So um, it has the wider end at the pivot rather than the less wide end. Um, and so often with that type of knife and particularly even on a Warncliffe, a straight edged uh, blade, the tip can sit kind of proud, but I can't catch it with my foot. Maybe just a tad, maybe just a tad, but it looks like there's a good amount of space in there. So it's interesting. I'm not sure if you'd be able to drop the tip at all, um, but let's open this up here. Nice action. Apparently I didn't get a bare leg when these came out before actually because of that, because I didn't have a lot of confidence in the um, this reverse sleeve board pattern. Uh, but apparently they had like not the best action. So let's take a look at this uh, closing action. Uh, probably not like a typical GEC. Now, interestingly, um, this, this pattern is the 59 pattern for GEC. I don't know that they had a name for it previous to now, um, but it was just for this Bear Lake. Uh, but now they are doing a run of knives, a GEC run of knives on what they are now calling the 59 pattern, which is this. So it'll be interesting to see how the action is on those knives. But let's close that again and see how it does. Not the greatest closing action, to be completely honest. Um, it feels like maybe it would improve with a little bit of oil. So I'll have to see, you know, if it does improve with some oil. So it closes, it closes itself, but let's see how, how far it can go without. So like, I mean, honestly, like right there. Yeah, it's not too bad. It does feel like it's actually getting better currently. So um, I think if, if you put a drop of oil in, it's probably gonna be good to go. Uh, I'm gonna do that and see how it does and go from there. But the main thing on that is that the kudu bone is really cool. That's that's the main thing. I really wanted to check out the kudu bone. It is more expensive. The kudu were like $200. Um, we'll open this up. You can see on the um, Benny's clip that it has a very abrupt belly. So you got to kind of get that tip up in there. But um, anyway, these, the micarta, at least the Frosted Mini Wheat, was like... $140, I believe, $139.95. So another keep calm and carry knives. I will, oh, well, I can't promise I'll keep calm, but I'll definitely carry knives. Um, here we go, Frosted Mini Wheats. That is uh, my, my user Northwoods. I have a Heritage Jack, I really like it. I have um, a whole article on the Heritage Jack and uh, I lo love the Heritage Jack. And it's in frosted mini wheats. So that's why I wanted to get uh, one of these in frosted mini wheats. As far as I am aware, those are the only two that have so far been made in frosted mini wheats. My card of the Heritage Jack and now the Bear Lake Jack. Or it's not a Bear Lake Jack, I don't think. I think it's just the Bear Lake. Anyway, um, let's open this up or pull it out, I guess. This one, I think. Yeah, sits slightly deeper. I can't catch my finger, eh, maybe slightly, but I think it does sit deeper. Um, and I just think that that frosted mini wheats is really cool. This one feels a little snappier, I think. Yeah, I think this one is a little snappier. I, I really do like the frosted mini wheats. It's so unique, the, the white micarta. Um, no blade play, I guess I should check for blade wrap, no blade wrap that I can feel or see. I'm going to check the, uh, kudu one also, cause why not? Right. Might as well be thorough. Don't want somebody to say, oh, you know, if, if I did have blade wrap that, that I created it, you know, later or something, but, uh, don't feel any, don't see any. So. Uh, no blade play on this one either, and no gaps really. Um, I think maybe some people might say that there's very, very slight gaps there, but for me, that's pretty much a gapless knife. Um, 
definitely some areas in this kudu where they're like kind of voids, I would say. So like I say, it's my first time with this material. But um, I'm excited to have gotten these. I uh, honestly, I think I probably will use the frosted mini wheat one. Um, hope to see, you know, but uh, I really do like that frosted mini wheats. I think it looks really cool and I'm happy to have gotten these. They are tough to get. And uh, honestly, to be completely honest, to, to kind of, I guess, give a little bit more discussion to this video while I put these knives away. Um, when I when I was able to buy two, I felt a little bit bad, like, a, you know, a little bit greedy. But then, you know, it's, that's the tough thing is that about these limited releases. And one note, uh, these weren't even that limited for a GEC. Uh, Jay said that of the the main handle materials of which Kudu and Frosted Mini Wheats Micarta are uh, some of the main ones. There were some like smaller uh, number ones, but of these main ones, there were about a hundred of each. So um, not, not a small amount for a GC. But uh, to get back to what I was saying there, uh, you know, it feels, it's tough because some people are able to get multiple on every run, it seems like. And, you know, who knows what the answer to that is, I don't, um, or why they're able to. You know, I don't really think there's a real problem of bots, like people like to say, um, but some people are able to, and then other people just are frustrated and, 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 you know, never get them. But I don't know what the answer to that is, but it did, you know, I, I had that thought, like, should have I bought two, um, or should have I let someone else buy them? And I guess my answer that I came to on that is one, there's definitely no guarantee that someone else wouldn't have also bought multiples if I hadn't. Uh, so it's not no guarantee that it would have gone to someone who, um, you know, had, doesn't have one or didn't get one or whatever. And then the other thing is that like, if I end up selling these, um, it's not going to be, at least if I end up selling them right away. I mean, if I keep them for a long time, I don't know, you know, what I'll do. Um, I, it's hard to let go of knives when you've had them for a while and really like them. But, uh, if I do decide, you know, I don't need both of these in my collection and I decide to sell one relatively soon, I'm not going to do it at $400, you know, $350, whatever, um, you know, amount they go for on eBay right after the drop. I'm going to do it at a reasonable price, um, you know, at least cover my fees and shipping and stuff, maybe a little bit more, but reasonable. And I think that that is, honestly makes it more likely that someone can get it at a pretty reasonable price um, than through the drop. Now, the thing with that is that I sell first through... Uh, uh, on the Great Eastern Cutlery Club Facebook group, um, and then sometimes through Reddit, uh, and sometimes in person. Sometimes I just know people that want them and stuff. But um, anyway, I guess I, I have decided to absolve myself of the um, guilt of buying two of them. Is the purpose of <laughs> this discussion? I don't know. You know, I don't know if anybody's listening at this point in the video. But anyway, um, happy to have gotten them. Looking forward to getting a full feel for them, deciding, you know, what I'm going to carry, what I'm going to use, if I'm going to carry any of them, if I'm going to keep them, you know, how they'll fit into my collection, all of that. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. Uh, also, I am an affiliate of Knife Ship Free. So if you decide to buy something through Knife Ship Free, use the link in the description, helps out the channel. And Knife Ship Free is just great. I mean, Jay, um, everyone I've met from there, every interaction I've had has been good. So I genuinely and uh, wholeheartedly suggest using Knife Ship Free. Um, then also check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like these and knife related topics. I put them away already. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.